everyone, this is Casey with the Phoenix Project. The day's finally come, and I've completed the installer ISO for Phoenix. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my uh, Mac. I'm installing it on a Power Mac G5. I believe this should also work on a G4, but I don't have a G4 to test it, so you'll have to let me know. I've powered the computer on and I'm pressing C on the keyboard to boot from the optical drive. So we should see this boot into the installer in just a moment. So one of the differences between the Phoenix installer and some other installers is that the Phoenix installer does set a default uh, username and password here. So you'll want to make note of that. Otherwise, you just press enter at this screen and it will take a moment just to um, load the kernel from the DVD and then we will see the um, installer interface. The installer interface is um, a very simple interface. Uh, it doesn't have mouse support, but um, there's only a few um, options that you make from menus. So you just use your keyboard to highlight whatever your response is and then press enter. So it's a very simple system. And I'm going to show the, insti the entire install process just to show you exactly how this works. And then um, I'll show you this computer booting into Phoenix for the first time. I'm gonna choose English, United States, American English. A benefit to the Phoenix installer is that you don't need any um, scripts. You don't need to download any custom scripts or patches or type in any repository addresses or um, remember any technical settings. That goes along with the primary objective of Phoenix, which is to have an approachable, friendly OS that um, all users can enjoy. I'm going to move down to central, press enter there. Phoenix is a derivative of Debian, um, just like Ubuntu um, and many other Linux based OSs. Um, but the advantage to Phoenix is that Phoenix is run off of its own repository. Um, and so with um, PowerPC being um, a secondary architecture or a community supported architecture, um, there's a lot of times that packages will be broken in, um, in the Debian repository. And so that's not something that you have to deal with if you are using Phoenix. This is the partitioner, so um, I'm just going to accept the default partitioning and then move that over to yes and press enter. From this point, um, the installer will handle everything from here on out. I don't need to interact with it anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward the video um, and then I'll come back when we're logging into Phoenix. <laughs>
that's the end of the installation. Um, it took about 15 minutes, I think, so it does take a little bit of time, uh, but it's a pretty easy process, I think. And so now we'll boot into Phoenix. While this boots up, I just want to take a moment to thank everyone that has made a donation to the project. Um, Phoenix has ended up being a little bit more um, of an expensive hobby than I originally anticipated. Um, like I said earlier, Phoenix has its own repositories. Um, so there are some expenses associated with running a server and bandwidth and that sort of thing. Um, so I appreciate uh, everyone that has made a donation. Um, don't feel like you have to, but uh, for those that have, it's much, much appreciated. So I'm going to go ahead and log in with the default username and password. And that puts us into the Phoenix desktop. You can see the brisk menu over here. If I go down to system tools and go to the system monitor, you can see here that um, we're running kernel 5.14 um, on my Power Mac G5. Um, it looks like there's a bit of a bug that I'll need to look into because this theming is incorrect. Yeah, so this should be using this Phoenix default. And this should be this here. So I'll um I'll fix that. Um, but yeah, this is the Phoenix desktop. Um, there's an eject uh, button right there um, because most Macs don't have it on the, the outside of the system. And then um, this is a little bit unique here as well. This is called Phoenix Companion. Um, when you first boot into Phoenix, uh, it's going to boot into um, a kind of compatibility mode for the graphics. Um, you can see here it's using LLVM pipe. Um, and that's because um, it seems like there's a lot of uh, problems with certain uh, Apple video cards. And so this um, aims to uh, drastically reduce the number of problems um, that people have when they boot into the desktop for the first time. If you have a supported GPU, you can go to Phoenix GPU Enabler. And um, you can check the supported GPU list. And if your GPU is supported, you can enable hardware acceleration. And that's going to give you um, better performance, basically. I mean, really, it, it runs pretty well overall. You can also install um, a curated app suite. This is going to have uh, applications that um, are, are very useful, but also apply to like the highest number of users. So you're not going to see like kind of professional level applications in here. Uh, it's going to have kind of things that like apply to everyone um, that everyone can get some use out of. And then you would just install those. I'm not going to do it right now, but um, you can also set up Libre, Libre Cloud services um, so that 
in your home directory here, uh, there will be a folder that will connect to a personal uh, cloud storage. And then you can also access that cloud storage on any device that has a web browser. There are some other useful tools in here as well. Um, otherwise, I think that Phoenix succeeds in providing a pretty user-friendly um, operating system. I don't think you need to be um, technically proficient to get a lot of enjoyment out of it. All right, thanks everybody for watching.